All right, welcome to GCP Online Meetup number 32. I'm Jonathan Champ. I'm your host today. Today we have a very special guest, Priyanka Vergadia. How are you? I'm good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And one thing I just found out, you've only been here for what? Three months. Wow. And now you're the expert at chatbots. <laughs> that deserves a fist bump right here. That's Yay. good. That's that's yeah. really impressive. So yeah, Priyanka's been around, you know, for only a couple months, but she's been telling us all about chatbots and how chatbots have been improving and automating a lot of the um, a lot of the activities for for her customers so yeah. yeah tell us a little more yeah sure so um i am customer engineer here at google so just a little introduction about myself i do have some background in ivrs and uh, technologies like interactive voice response and that's why chatbots uh, do sit in my um, have a special place in my heart <laughs> there we go <laughs> um so as soon as I joined Google, I realized that we acquired this company called API.ai, which we have renamed to Dialogflow mm -hmm. now. Um, and um, I got my hands around it, and my customers were talking about how we can improve uh, their experience. Um, so I, I had just got hands down working on um, some customer use cases, and I realized this, this could be very helpful to do um, as, a, as a live session um, for some of our on, online folks as well. So that's, where, that, that's why we are doing this today. Please do send us questions so we can answer them as they come in. Yep, so we'll be answering your questions. And just one thing that Priyanka mentioned is about the user experience. I've actually worked with a lot of customers who say, I mean, they want to uh, you know, uh, attend to customer needs very quickly, right? I think we're living in a digital age where we expect yeah. answers right away like hey you know what's my shipping confirmation you know where's right. my flight status they want it right now and chatbots will be able to give you that kind of immediate and uh, you know the sense of urgency that cu uh, customers desire and want That's and all. also to to um, extend to that point a lot of my customers like help desk everybody and every customer can relate mm -hmm. to because everyone yeah. has a help desk and everyone gets those calls around how to how do i reset my password or how do i submit a ticket and they don't want to talk to anybody yeah. so from the user perspective they don't want to talk to anybody and from um, the company's perspective they don't want to waste money on handling those types of monotonous right. calls so i think for those reasons as well chatbot is a very good thing. yeah yeah if someone had to talk to me about resetting passwords every time exactly they would hate right. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good segue into kind of what you're demoing, which is a, a you know, ticketing system. Yep. All right. So let's just um, dive right in. I have, um, I don't have a lot of slides. All I have is to show you a demo and then how that demo actually works behind the scenes. So that's all that's in the agenda. And then you're obviously always welcome to post questions. We'll handle them as they come in and also towards the end. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the demo. So this like is it. that help desk demo that I was talking about. Um, you could you could put your um, you could actually integrate it with your web chat interface or your mobile website interface. Uh, put it in there. You could also put it in your in Google Home. Um, as an app, as an action, and then you can also use the same chatbot um, that you built in Dialogflow and put it into your uh, uh, assistant as well. So um, it's like one-time effort, but you can uh, broadly distribute it into, into all the different channels. You could use Facebook as well for, for if you interface with your customers over Facebook. Mm -hmm. So just for some of the viewers, mm -hmm. so that they don't feel intimidated, I mean, you don't actually have to do any you know, machine learning like, I mean, you're not doing any like mathematical algorithms and things like that for, to do this. I'm glad you asked that question. No, you're not. So, and I'm going to show you in Dialogflow, it automatically learns. So all you're doing is basically providing it a um, couple of different utterances of what a user can say. Mm -hmm. And then the machine, uh, the software would basically learn on its own over time um, as to what re requests it gets. And then it um, it modifies itself over time. Got and it. There is also a training component to it, so you can train it um, with the requests and responses that you could get. Great. I guess we'll walk through that in a little bit. Yep. All right. So let's try to test this thing. I would like to submit a ticket, and then it should respond back saying, "All right, give me your name so I can put you put your ticket in," and then I can say, "All right, my name is." I'm just making up some name, uh, and then it will say, okay, thank you, John. So it, it's smart enough to understand that this was John, and then now describe the ticket for me. And then I can say, all right, my phone screen is broken. Can you help me with that? And then it should respond back saying, I have logged your ticket in. 
this is their ticket number and someone will contact you in 24 hours and that's all you pretty much need in most cases like a person on the phone would also just call in and submit a ticket for you and they won't be personally handling the ticket right somebody else in the queue will be handling the ticket so the chatbot just did that in like five seconds for for the customer now you take that now you can see what happens behind the scenes so i have a data store behind the scenes which is a database no sql database and it's basically sending that data into the database and saving it so my phone screen is broken this is john this was the ticket number what is it using to send into data store so it uses um cloud functions okay. to send it to data store and in cloud functions and i have it up here um it's really not a big code that you're writing. Right, All you're doing simple. is just interfacing with data store and calling the API for the data store. So right here, I'm take, I'm parsing out that email phone number. We, we're not catching the email in this case because the user didn't give it to us. If they did, we would catch that as well. But you would take that, put it in the data store, and then respond back saying, I successfully logged your ticket with the ticket number. So it's very simple function that mm -hmm. you're writing. And the reason I'm using Cloud Function here is also because you don't have to set up servers or install them and do all that jazz. All you're doing is you just need a function that can talk to an API. Right. So that uh, Cloud Functions is best for doing that. So, all right, we did that in the chat. You could do the same with Google Home or Actions. So let me just give you a little glimpse of how you would do that with, with the Google Home. Um, I'm using the simulator, which you would use to test out. And I can say, talk to help desk support. Let's get the test version of help desk support. Hi, how can I help you? Help me reset my password. Help me reset my password. No problem. Your username, and I will send the link to reset your password. All right, so that was what I wanted to show you. Like, you could do the same thing that you were doing from the interface, from mm -hmm. chat, um, also within, within Google Home. Um, now, how was all this built? So let's get into dialogue flow a little bit mm -hmm. to understand how this was all built. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you want to know that as well. Um, so I'm going to talk about in intents and entities um, in a little bit more detail. I have um, a slide in there, but it's basically, um, in short, intent is basically whatever the user can say. And then what do you do after user says that? So like, what action do you take and what response do you provide the user? That's an intent. An entity is based, so I'm going to open one of the intents here so that you can see. So we, you saw that we submitted a ticket. So that's the intent um, where user can say, I want to submit a ticket. I have a problem. I have an issue. They can say all sorts of things to submit a ticket. So now you're capturing them in a bucket that these are all the things that a user can say. And then you're taking an action on it. So in this case, I don't have an entity because um, all I want is to capture those those things that the user is saying, the problem, the incident, the ticket, and then just give them a static response, which is, okay, sure, I can help you with that. Give me your name. So there's no action that I need to take other than just giving them a static response. So that's why this one's a little bit simple. When we go into this one, which is the description. So remember when I asked for the description from the user, like what is your, what is the problem that you're facing? They said, my phone screen is broken, my laptop's frozen or something like that. I am parsing out what type of a problem it is. And that is just by nothing but defining an entity. And that entity in this case is an incident type, which I'm parsing out and putting in my data store and saying, okay, this is, these are all the tickets that came for phone problems. Mm -hmm. And so now I can say, this is my entity, which is incident type. And now it's my variable that I can take an action on. And then um, I'm not responding anything here, but I'm asking it to go to a webhook, which is where cloud function is written. So when I go into my fulfillment, which is where my webhook is defined, this is the URL for the cloud function that we saw right here. If I close that, you can see that that's the link to the cloud function and that's what you define in your fulfillment. You could actually also write the same cloud function 
within the editor and we just released this two wow. weeks ago so that's a really cool feature now you don't even have to go out of uh, dialog flow to write a cloud function you can just do it right here in the editor yeah that's really nice so yeah that's that's how this was all built mm -hmm. do you have any more questions yeah I mean I think one thing to keep in mind is that you put in a lot of different intents right but but you don't actually have to put every single combination or permutation of questions that the user is going to ask, right? I mean, that's yes. the whole point of training. So can you talk a little bit about the whole training process? Uh, you know, you've collected maybe some questions that you get and, you know, at some point maybe the chatbot didn't understand. And at that point you need to throw that in there and say, hey, this yeah. is, the, you know, the intent's the same, which is what you're trying to do, but they asked it in a different, different way. way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm really glad you asked. That. This is in a, this is the part feature in within Dialogflow that's in beta right now, which is training. So the first thing you would do for any uh, machine learning models is you would try to give it as much training data as possible. So that's what we are trying to do with all the request utterances that we put in the intents. But there will be things that that you may not be able to catch in there. But those are the things that you can catch in here on the screen. I have the training portion of the of the bar here, where if I click on one of these, um, I can see that. Um, help me reset my password was correctly matched to an intent password reset. Uh, I could have found something that did not match my intent. So we could say something, um, and I can't think of an example, but, but this could probably uh, imagine that this was attached to a different or a wrong intent. Mm -hmm. Then we could change that right here and say, okay, now mm. attach it to contact us because that's where it should fall. Right. And then say that, um, I approve that and then approve it. And then once you do that, now every time a user says something related to reset or something related to help me reset, um, it would automatically fall into that contact us. Mm -hmm. So that's how you would continue to like somebody who's managing this chatbot would continue to go in and try to see if things are falling off and then continue to maintain it and manage it by approving the training. Mm -hmm. So the chatbot captures all the history and then can you show like how you actually do training? Is it you just kind of, you have all this training data and then you push the train button? Yeah, let me do this. So let's see. So I have, um, say I say this one and I change that and mm -hmm. I change it to, um, I'm gonna keep it the same and just say approve sure. and then say approve. Mm -hmm. And then once it does that, now see the oh. training has started, it's starting to train and you can see the gear icon moving here. Got it. And then once it's done, it's going to say the model is trained mm -hmm. and now it's going to start. And you can test it right here as well. You can test the same phrase here and it'll start to take it again. Very nice, very yeah. nice. And then can you talk a little bit about the different integrations that we have? I feel like Dialogflow, one of the benefits is there's a lot of different integrations. Yeah. Um, so there is, so um, the point that I made earlier about, I have the, um, the web demo version, and then I also have the assistant that's enabled. Um, so you're basically building it once, but you can now deploy it by just um, toggling the switch and say, I want to deploy this on Facebook mess Messenger as well. And all you do is that, and then you verify your token for access to Facebook, and off you go. And it's enabled for Facebook as well. Um, and then similarly for Slack, Twilio, if you use Skype, uh, we have some really cool integrations done with Skype as well. I think um, one of our customers has used this for like controlling their refrigerators. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's a very cool use case. And so, yeah, you can, these are all the options that you can connect it to uh, and just write the code once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a cool part. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that seems like it's part of the fulfillment process. Uh, you know, you covered intent and maybe at a high level intent is, what are you trying to do, right? Like, right. what's the goal? Maybe you want to reset a password. Maybe you want to order something. Maybe you want to contact support. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the entities. Like, how do entities fall into the intent? Are they entities or just things that you want dialog flow to capture from the sentence, right? Right. So okay. entities are things. So let me actually give you a simpler example so it makes a little more sense. So in this particular example, I have... Uh, a weather forecasting application, mm -hmm. right? So this is much easier to understand. You say weather forecast in San Francisco tomorrow. So the user is interested in San Francisco city and tomorrow, 
is the time frame. So those are my two entities. Entity is anything that you want to take an action on. So I want to take an action on the city so I can take this city and plug it into my API mm -hmm. and get a response for it. So, and then same for tomorrow. I can, I could get a request for today and then I would take that it into a date and then give it to my API and that would respond back. So anything you want to take an action on. The one thing I would also touch here um, that you didn't ask Jonathan is context. A context mm -hmm. is very important as well. So um, this, is, this is actually a biggest differentiator for, um, for dialogue flow in general. So in this case, I can say, a user can say weather forecast in San Francisco tomorrow, and then it would respond back with, with that weather. And then following up i can say oh how about today and then it would know that i'm still talking about san francisco so you can set that context and the way you do that is again going back into dialogue flow and then i can show you one of the intents that has context so when i'm doing description remember it is it remembers the name email and phone number from my previous intent um, and all you do is just connect them together and it will remember the context. Mm -hmm. So that was in short how yeah. you would do it. That's yeah. really good. So yeah. it seems like you can make some very complex conversations. It's not just question, answer, question, answer. Yeah. It's more like question, answer, follow-up question, follow -ups. answer, yeah. follow-up, even more follow-ups. Yeah. And that's where context comes in. Exactly, and that's where the whole natural language processing within the within the engine and the machine learning also comes into picture as well. So, um, and it's learning over time. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. Yeah. So let's see, we have a couple questions. Let's talk about. All right, what are some drawbacks of? You know, I think, you know, this is a meetup, so we try to talk about the great things about dialogue flow. What are some drawbacks of dialogue flow? Um, I would say um, it's a it's a product that's um, obviously constantly evolving as we say in machine learning mm -hmm. is all constantly obviously evolving re yeah. and yeah. evolving um so that's one thing that i would say uh we are very open to feedbacks and learning from and it's also a space that's evolving itself in mm -hmm. itself like chatbots in yeah. general so um we are um learning through the experiences um there, some of the other drawbacks I would say are really just around like languages. We're constantly working on supporting more and more languages. I think we have about 12 to 14 today, mm -hmm. but like we have in the other speech APIs and uh, we, I think we have around 100, 180 um, languages mm -hmm. in there, right? Yeah. So around that range. So we're constantly trying to catch up with that. So that I would say is a little bit of a drawback, right. but other than that, um, it's evolving product. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think so customers, obviously, they love the fact that it's out of the box. I mean, I'll throw out some buzzwords out there in machine learning, right? Like, you know, LSTMs, recurrent neural networks. I mean, these are all mathematical algorithms and models used to build chatbots. Yeah. If you're not interested in doing that, right, this is kind of an out of box solution. If you need more control, maybe, like let's say you're doing something fun, like I don't know, generating Game of Thrones text or some yeah. like, you know, some, random language and you know that's where you're not going to get that type of control with this right this is you know we're training the model for you we've built it out for you and we've made it really simple but if you need kind of very yeah. specific use cases yeah uh, yeah you know this is probably not the best tool yeah i would also add like you know if you're looking for um trying to find ways to start using machine learning in some way within your uh, organization, this would probably be your uh, good entry point mm -hmm. into um, like exposure to machine learning because it's like that easy way where you don't have to worry about training the model, yeah. but you still understand how the model would be trained if you do it in some other application. Right. So I think it's like a low barrier to entry into machine learning uh, in a very safe place because you uh, you have the model being trained by the platform itself, mm -hmm. but you're just learning through it. Right, right. You know? Actually, another interesting use case that I've been working with a customer on is, you know, they see it as a phase approach, right? Machine learning right. is a very, it can encompass many things where, hey, we want to automate everything we do. Yeah. But I think realistically, it's just kind of taking it step by step. So the first step is really, let's just try to have a chat bot, right? right? And this is like a really easy first step. Like, hey, exactly. let's just start figuring out what customers are asking. Now that they've collected all this information, they might yeah. realize, oh, this is exactly what we need, or yeah. it's not. Yeah. And so, and then know. it's like it's like an easy 
step back as well like mm -hmm. if it's not then let's just step back start again yeah it, you didn't lose anything so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you're still totally collecting agree. all that you know yeah. data from your customers and to, to build your own model i mean we have customers building uh, you know chatbots with our cloud ml technology and yeah. just you know using tensorflow so it's a uh, i mean there's many ways to kind of uh, to do achieve. the same thing but mm -hmm. um yeah it's a yeah it's a platform to make things simple all right so another question is it free I love that question. Everyone wants to know if it's free. <laughs> it is absolutely free at this time. So you can go ahead, start building things mm -hmm. and, and start using them. Um, the integrations that you do with your web hooks and stuff, they, they could probably cost you something if you're mm -hmm. hosting them, say, in Cloud Functions or somewhere right, else. Right, right. Actually, that's where you might get tried. Like Cloud Functions, you pay. Yeah. Like, it's a small price for a something. Small Data price. Store, you would pay. Yeah. But right now, I think Dialogflow is actually free. Dialogflow itself. itself is free. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. No, that's good. And then, uh, why, why did Google rename API.ai? I mean, like when I first heard of API.ai, I was like, I don't know what it is. Exactly. I think most people thought that, right? Like, what is API.ai? You go to the website, okay, is it a chatbot? Okay, it says chatbot. Is that all it does? Because API.ai is such a broad name, right? Great question, yeah. And you you pretty much kind of answered it your, um, uh, yourself. It's basically, uh, it was hard to understand what it was just by the name. Um, and it is API, it is AI, mm -hmm. but again, um, in normal language, uh, it's what is it really doing? It's really, um, helping you have smart and intelligent conversations, mm -hmm. which is very much aligned with the dialogue flow name. Yeah. So that's why we, we took a step back and we made it more commonly usable yeah. word than, um, than API.ai, which is hard to comprehend as to what it does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the funny thing about names is no one's ever going to agree on a name. Exactly. Like, I mean, dialogue flow, you can argue, yeah, it's yeah. not the best name, but it's not the worst, right? Exactly. And I think for any name, it's it's always going to be a yeah, uh, you know, a, a tough an argue, arguing point. There'll be some in support and some yeah. against it. Just, so yeah, just like just like politics. So yeah. Um, all right, no, that that's good. Uh, and then I think. Um, so meta question link to dialogue flow docs and intro. I haven't heard of it before. Yeah, so Alex will definitely send a link to actually if you just do a quick Google search, hopefully Google is good at finding dialogue. Yeah. I think I did a quick search yesterday and the it's first, the first thing that comes up. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then Ashok asked the question, how to name an agent for different integrations or is it the same for Google Home and Alexa? It's the same for everything. So all the integrations you have, um, you will name the agent the same. So there, there's only going to be one agent mm -hmm. and then the integration, yeah. um, you just enable the integration to be available for all the different platforms, but you're only writing the agent once. Right. So yeah, it would be very complex if you had to create a different agent for different yeah. integrations. So yeah, basically one agent encompasses all the different, all the different you know, um, in touch points integration and, yeah. points. Yes. Okay. Yeah, great. And then let's see here. All right. Well, look, I don't see any more. I mean, that was a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. You know, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any topics you'd like to discuss, throw it in the comments. You know, Priyanka, thank you so much for your time. That was fascinating. I mean, I'm going to build a chatbot just to talk to me because I don't have many friends. <laughs> you should do that then. <laughs> but I can talk to you. All right, that's true. That's true. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, tune in next time. I think our next topic in two days is actually on Terraform, which is super cool as well. Uh, you know, automating deployments with Terraform on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yes, Thank you, everyone. Of Bye.